Hey everybody, it's Gordy coming at you today. Uh, I'm outside, it's been rainy this morning, but this afternoon the, the rain has stopped, but it's cold. So I'm out here in a little bit heavier coat and uh, my fingers are a little chilly. I'm gonna be operating radio, so I don't want gloves on. But anyway, hey to everybody. Um, I wanna talk to you today about secure communications for after a major event, SHTF, WROL, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and potentially secure communications now legally in good times. So there are basically, um, I would say, well, there are several forms, but we're gonna be talking about radio communications. So basically there are two ways to really secure your communications. The best way is true encryption. Now encryption, what it does is it actually encapsulates your audio, your voice, in a signal that's transmitted across the airwaves and then it's unencrypted or decoded on the other end. And in order to do that, the encryption, uh, the two radios have to share the same key, if you will. Um, let me go ahead and put this in a, in a, in a scenario, in an a analogy that most people will understand. If you have home Wi-Fi, or if you have Wi-Fi at work or whatever, and you've set that up, um, hopefully you've just secured that and it's encrypted and it uses AES encryption usually. That is a standard of encryption. Well, that's basically the same technology that encrypted radios will use. However, um, encrypted radios cost a lot more. I mean, if you're talking about a little handheld radio like this that actually does encryption, you're talking over $1,000 a piece for them, uh, potentially two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 a piece. Um, if, if you've got the budget for that, uh, you should probably go find a commercial radio sales company in your area and talk to them about encrypted radios if you want to do that. I'm not going to be discussing encrypted radios a whole lot uh, any further on because they're just too expensive for most people's budget. So the next best thing would be digital communications. Now. Um, one last thing about encryption, in order to encrypt a signal, it has to be digital. So it's going to be a digital radio anyway. But if you take the encryption off, you have just a digital signal. And there are several different digital technologies out there. Today we're going to be talking about DMR, which is digital mobile radio, um, also referred to as Moto Turbo, M-O-T-O-T-R-B-O, -O -T -T Moto Turbo because Motorola was the first one to, to bring it to this country. I don't know if Motorola originated the technology. I know it was originally made standard in Europe under the European International Standards, whatever uh, association over there. Anyway, wasn't done here, it was done in Europe. DMR is becoming very affordable. Um, this is a, uh, a radiodity dual band. It does VHF and UHF, and it does DMR, and it does FM analog, and they're under 100 bucks on Amazon. You can get them for about 95 bucks on Amazon all day long. You might can catch them on sale. Actually, I think I got this one on sale for 65 bucks a year, year and a half ago, something like that. This one here is one that uh, I recently acquired this is a uh, it's another radiodity radio but a bunch of you are going boy that looks an awful lot like a bofang uv5r yeah it sure does it's built on the same chassis the electronics are a little bit different and it and it's uh, programming software its firmware is very different um, but those are both dmr radios and for testing purposes today, I've got my, you guys have probably seen this before, my little uh, trusty old Yaesu FT65R, which I just love. So, um, digital communications can be pretty secure for most people. The least form, and in actuality, I would consider it a, uh, it's windy, I'm putting my hands in my pockets because the wind is cold. Um, the it's it's a false sense of security 
there are technologies on uh, FM radios called CTCSS, which is Continuous Tone Carrier Squelch System, and DCS, which is Digital Code Squelch. So the common thing there is both of them talk about squelch. CTCSS is an analog. It's a sub-audible tone, so you can't hear it with your ear, but the radio can hear it. And then uh, DCS is a digital code, which you can't hear that's sent along with your, uh, your audio signal that the radio on the other end can, uh, can pick up and, and use. Now, as I said, the commonality there is squelch. So CTCSS and DSS are not encryption. What they do is it's basically you can set up a code, either the CTCSS or the DCS, they have to be the same and they have to be the same code from uh, for the two radios to talk but what that does is it allows let's say i'm using ctcss and i'm using a tone of 88.5 um, so if i'm transmitting and the radio that i'm transmitting is transmitting that tone of 88.5 on ctcss the radio that i'm transmitting to needs to have the CTCSS tone of 88.5 configured in it in order for them to be able to hear my transmission. So if I have CTCSS set up on these two radios and I'm transmitting on one, the other one can hear me. However, if there are other people in the area that are on the same frequency but they don't have tone set up, they'll be able to hear it as well. So CTCSS and DCS are not secure communications. They were designed to allow you to be in a busy radio traffic area and only hear the traffic that you want to hear. So if there's somebody else um, talking somewhere else and you don't want to hear their traffic, you can put tones on your radios and if they're not using the same tones, then you won't hear them. You'll only hear the people that have the same tone as you. But again, let me stress this. That does not mean that anybody um, cannot hear you just because the other radio can't hear you. It doesn't work that way. Um, an FM signal is an FM signal, whether it has a tone with it or not, or a digital code with it or not. Any other radio that's on the same frequency that does not have a tone squelch set in it will be able to hear your transmission. So don't think it's secure. So encryption digital CTCSS and CTCSS and DCS give you a false sense of security don't think you have secure communications okay so enough about that let me demonstrate a little bit for you about what um, DMR does these two radios are DMR radios and they're both programmed for DMR and I have them on the same frequency and um, they're in DMR, there are a lot of different codes that you can use for privacy. So if the other radios don't have the codes, they won't be able to hear you. It's a little bit different than CTCSS and DCS. So um, because one radio has to uh, turn the audio into a digital signal and then this radio receives that digital signal and then has to decode it, there's gonna be just a little bit of a de delay, like a half second or something. And I'll demonstrate that for you. I'm going to hold this one up by the speaker so you can hear. Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Okay. It doesn't sound quite like real audio because it's compressed and it's digitized. So that is the advantage of uh, DMR. Now, I'm going to turn this radio on, and it's on the same frequency. And this is an FM radio. And I want you to hear what that sounds like on if somebody else has a regular old bofang or, or whatever and they're trying to listen into your conversations but you're using dmr this is what it's going to sound like well let me turn this other one off so you don't get confused by that testing testing one two three yeah all they heard was a bunch of garbage it sounds like some digital stuff like a modem or something exactly that's basically how that works let me, let me demonstrate that again See, when this radio keys up, the signal is can't be decoded by a regular FM radio. 
and you have so many options on the DMR radios as far as uh, codes. They call them color codes and stuff like that, and, and, and I'll get into that briefly in just a second. But there's a lot of different options where you can keep it more private. Somebody would have to really work at it to be able to listen into your conversations. It would take a lot of time. So, um, let's talk about for a second the, uh, the way it's programmed and what that means. First off, um, we'll call this a disclaimer. If you can't already program your own Bofang radio so that you can communicate in, in your group, don't even bother with DMR because DMR is a lot more complex. Um, in standard FM, basically all you have is the frequency and whether or not it has a CTCSS or DCS tone. That's all. That's all you have to do for a regular Bofang radio. Now repeaters get a little bit more complicated because then you have to program two frequencies in it. But that's a whole other ball game. In the DMR or any other digital technology, there are a lot of different factors that come into play. Um, in DMR, you have zones, you have color codes, you have channels, and you have contacts. And all of those things have to be programmed just right and come together to actually make that radio talk. And the radio on the other end has to be programmed exactly the same way where everything all comes together in order to be able to decode that so that you can hear what's going on. Hopefully I explained that well enough for you to understand how DMR can be a fairly secure communications. So that being said, if you're interested in secure communications and you think DMR might be a good fit for you, I would strongly encourage you to go get your technician ham radio license, learn how to program a standard Bofang radio, and then start learning about DMR. Um, it's it's kind of a step up. I mean, you're not going to jump in a 13-speed, a 18-wheeler manual shift um, right after you get your driver's license at, at 16 years old or whatever and think you can drive it. Well, it's the same kind of thing here. You need to learn to drive, you know, Grandpa's old pickup truck, in other words, program the Bofang radio, before you go jumping in that 13-speed, 18-wheeler, i.e. use a DMR radio. So... It's about education, learning, and it's going to require some time uh, from you in order to do that. But DMR can be a very good option. And if you get your ham radio license, um, there are a lot of things that you can do with DMR. I want to show you this little device here. This little device right here is what's called a DMR hotspot. And uh, what this does is all I have to do is hook a, a USB power cord up to it like I was going to charge my cell phone. But I hook a USB power cord up to this, and it charge it uh, powers this thing up. And then this thing gets programmed. It's a little computer in here and, and two little radios, actually. This one uh, operates on the DMR radio, and it has a little built-in Wi-Fi. So what this does is it connects to the Wi-Fi router at my house, and this little box connects to the Internet. And then I can use a DMR radio to talk to this box and this box then can connect to the internet and using the DMR technology I can talk to any other DMR radio that's connected to the internet in the world so using that hotspot connected to the internet I could talk to uh, somebody in Australia that has a DMR hotspot connected to the internet or um, potentially a repeater uh, maybe there's a repeater in Sydney. I, I don't know if there is or not, but let's say there's a DMR repeater in Sydney. I could program that uh, a channel in my DMR radio so that I could talk to that repeater in Sydney, Australia using my little hotspot here. And I could talk to the, the DMR operators in Sydney just about any time I wanted to as long as the Internet's still working. So if you have family, friends that are a long ways away, you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on radio communications, and you already have a plan in place for everybody to, to come together, if the grid goes down or something like that, DMR could be a really good option. Um, you can buy little devices like this for 100 150 bucks. program them to fit your, uh, your uh, Wi-Fi router, um, 
and then program the channels on your radio and you can make that happen. A lot of fun in ham radio, a lot of different facets to ham radio. Again, I encourage you to go get your ham radio license and learn about communications, folks. So, all right. Um, it's cold. My fingers are cold. Hopefully, I've given you enough information to um, at least pique your interest, possibly in DMR, and shown you how it can be uh, at least a more than semi-secure communications method for you. So, with that, y'all have a great day. Shalom. I'll catch you next time.